2017-18 Winter and Spring Sports Banquet. My name is Nick Scandrett. I'm the Director of Athletics and Physical Activities here at the College of Lake County. Uh, this is a great time to get together and celebrate our seasons. We certainly have had a historic year. Uh, coming off our fall sports banquet, we were celebrating four conference titles, um, some national uh, tournament qualifications and so forth. We, we don't have any national conference titles to celebrate this evening, but we do certainly have a lot of other accolades and things to celebrate um, and so forth. Uh, we've got three teams, or let's see, men's and women's cross country in the fall, and then we had this spring we've got women's tennis, men's tennis, and men's golf competing at nationals. So let's give them a round of applause. In fact, you'll notice that our men's tennis team is not here. Um, so unfortunately, the timing didn't work out, but I'm glad they're not here because they're in Plano, Texas, competing for that national title. Um, but all the accolades are great to celebrate, and we certainly will do that tonight. But my focus tends to gravitate more towards the behind the scenes type of things. Um, like when I get emails and letters from local establishments saying that they've seen our student athletes wearing their Lancer apparel doing acts of kindness, holding a door, um, things like that. Those things are pretty special. Uh, the kids that come back from an injury and have resilient seasons, those are remarkable. The kids that endure maybe an academic ineligibility and stick it out and come back and reform their, uh, their efforts and, and become good students. Uh, all kinds of stories like that that really make uh, this place special, make my job super rewarding. Um, obviously, I'm competitive as anybody. I want to win, um, but really those are the types of stories that make me feel good at night. Um, so with that said, I know you're here to hear from your coaches and not from me. Um, so I, I just encourage you to listen to your coaches closely. I know they have really great feelings towards you all about their student athletes. Uh, they put a lot of time and effort into this thing, so I'm looking forward to hearing what they have to say as well. Um, before I get to my thank yous and then I'll move on, um, I do want to introduce our new president, Dr. Lori Sedek, College of Lake County. She's only been here for two weeks, so I certainly wasn't expecting her to be here because I'm sure her schedule is full. Um, but it says a lot about her and uh, I'm tremendously excited uh, to work with her and, and uh, under her leadership to keep building our program to, to big, bigger and better things. So thank you for coming. Also, Karen Lavin, our assistant, or our vice assistant, or sorry, vice president, not assistant vice president, vice president of student development. Not with us tonight is our dean of student life, Teresa Aguinaldo. She's a dean over athletics. I can't tell you uh, enough how supportive she is for athletics. She, her, her son is graduating in New York, um, so she really wanted to be here. She usually is, um, but she was really, really sad and bummed about that. But uh, thank you, Teresa. You can tell her I said thank you. That'd be great. Um, but uh, she, she's just a tremendous supporter of us and, and a just a great advocate for our student athletes. Moving on to our athletic staff, uh, Sue Garcia right here, we'll introduce her later as well, head softball coach. She does a lot of the behind the scenes things as far as operations and events go, uh, all the travel and logistics and stuff like that, so thanks Sue for getting that all organized for us. Uh, coach Heath Cummings. Baseball guys know him well, obviously, but uh, so do our other student athletes. He's our academic success coordinator for all of our student athletes, so we appreciate his efforts and attention to our academics and keeping that a priority for us. Um, now with us tonight is Renee Blackburn, Cindy Munda, and Arnita Walker uh, do a great job of keeping things running well in our building. Um, and then last but not least, Vanessa Richardson, our athletics trainer. I don't know if she's told everybody, but I'm going to let the cat out of the bag here. She's leaving us. Why don't you stand up and wave? Vanessa, wave everybody so I know who you are. <laughs> Tremendous job taking care of our athletes, whether it be preventable treatment to fixing up boo-boos and all that stuff. You athletes know this. I'm not telling you anything new. Um, 
but we really love working with her. We're going to miss her tremendously. We appreciate all your time and efforts and uh, all the cold weather conversations you and I had together outside and all that stuff. So thank you, Vanessa. Uh, I want to thank our coaches. Not a lot of pay, a lot of time, um, and a lot of passion for what you do. We're really lucky. Um, I would venture to say easily over 100 years of experience between the coaches with us tonight. Um, which is tremendous. They've all been coaching for a very long time, have a tremendous wealth of knowledge, care deeply about what they do. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and that goes right into our, our coaches, spouses, and everything for lending us uh, your spouse to, uh, including my wife, you know, when we have those long nights and weekends, whether it be recruiting or, or obviously in the season. So thank you very much. Jada. Hey, Nick. Stand up. <laughs> <laughs> Seems she like she's been with us forever now, but it, it's it's also too soon for her to be done with us. Uh, Jada is I don't even know what to call her. She's been a manager for basketball, but so much more than that. She's in her building every single day. She tells me hello every single day. She's almost like the Walmart greeter of our. Of our <laughs> But uh, her personality is infectious, and she has given us so much of her time, she'll do anything for you. And she loves CLC. We love Jada. We're going to miss you. She's moving on to University of Wisconsin Parkside, correct? Yes. Good luck to you. Okay, uh, with that, I'm going to introduce our head men's basketball coach, Chuck Ramsey, longtime coach, Hall of Famer. There you go. Thank you. Thanks to everyone for coming out tonight and congratulations to all the athletes and their parents and friends, family. It's a, a, a really nice conclusion to a school and athletic year and uh, it's, it's really nice to see so many of you out here tonight. And I would like to also say thank you to a few people, um, Jada and Lizzie Auer. Oh, please stand. These were our managers for the better part of the past three years, and it's just been incredible, whether it's taping, stats, uh, you name it. They, they're very knowledgeable and very reliable and uh, have done a great job for us. My assistant coach, Bill Worley, He's not here, but I would say thank you to Bill for doing a great job. He's, a, he's in touring Europe right now, so he's, he's doing all right. He's chilling. <laughs> uh, Richard Ray, who has uh, done a fantastic job of putting together tapes and, and put, done it in such a fashion that our kids have access quickly to their, their work and they can share it, and it's a, it's a great thing what Richard has done here. He's very talented, and it's a tremendous addition. I'd like to say thank you to the entire athletic department for the work, support that they give everyone, a lot of behind the scenes work, uh, things that don't uh, necessarily uh, attract a lot of attention. And I, uh, finally, uh, I would like to say thank you to Nick Scandrett. Uh, I've been here six years, so I have a, 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 a small frame of reference, but I can tell you in the time that Nick has been our athletic director, things have gotten better for athletes and coaches every year in every way. Uh, athletes, you may have just been here one year, maybe two or even three. Looking over the whole, th the whole spectrum, uh, and it keeps the arrow is continuing to go up. There's a lot to feel good about, about Lancer Athletics. As far as our season this year, uh, we won 17 and lost 14. We were eight and six in the conference. We played a lot of close ball games. At the end of the year, we averaged over 31 games. We averaged one more point per game than our opponent. Uh, the record was, was close, and so were a lot of the games. Uh, okay, I would like for our players to please step forward. Come on up here, fellas. 
We have five of them here tonight, and uh, we're very proud of all of these guys. Uh, to speak about each one individually quickly, uh, just step up here. Sam McKinney. <laughs> Sam's a red shirt. That means he went to class this year and practiced every day, but didn't play in the games. So now he has a, a year of development behind him and still two more years of eligibility at this level. Made tremendous progress in practice, worked hard all the time, uh, and, and was just, is just a tremendous member of the team. And we're really looking forward to see the growth that Sam will make in the next two years. Zach Pilcher. Zach was one of our leaders. We had two primary sophomore players this year, Zach and Alexio, who gave us uh, great leadership. They were captains, but they were more than that. They were really leaders. They were the adults in the room at times, the clear thinking uh, uh, leadership that you need by example uh, and, and uh, uh, by word also. Zach has played two years here. He's on his way to Illinois State University. He's had a great two years here. He got better. He took on really tough assignments, always playing against bigger people, and, and was a real fighter for us, and as uh, uh, I think just had an excellent two years. We're real proud of him. Alexio Ramirez. Uh, like Zach, Alexio made steady progress. Uh, Alexio lost, uh, missed the season due to a torn ACL, so he's been here for three years and uh, has just shown tremendous progress. Uh, there are different ways to get to this level. Some guys have a lot of success in high school and kind of uh, plateau or level off from there. Alexio uh, just kept improving, just kept improving and was one of our leaders and uh, one of the things that, uh, that made it tough for us the last quarter of the season or so was when he got hurt with the, the broken hand and, and when we didn't have him, it, it really hurt us. He was a, a really skilled player and a tremendous leader on our team. Jared Scullins. Jared's a, a freshman uh, who did a lot for us this year, uh, coming in and playing a lot of minutes and having a lot of responsibility on the floor. He's a guy you can count on, good student, good person, good teammate, skilled basketball player. He uh, was our uh, uh, was a, our third leading scorer in the conference, our set, second leading rebounder, very good defensive player, and I think he has his best basketball ahead of him. I didn't know a lot about Elijah coming in. I had not seen him play, and, and unfortunately he got a concussion early in preseason practice. So when we got, uh, when we began to play games, I really didn't know what to expect from him. And I think he shocked everybody on the bench and the crowd and so on in the first game when he took the ball and uh, just kind of went up and slammed it against the defense, <laughs> against a good team. And from that point on, we saw uh, this, is, this is an aggressive, pretty skilled player with a lot of upside. Elijah's an outstanding student and uh, has really been a, a great teammate this year. He falls in that category of just a good guy, of a person that you can trust and, and has good skills in basketball. And we look forward to uh, watching him continue to improve. We have a couple of team awards. First is our most improved player. This is both a one-year award and a three-year award for steady improvement in spite of injury and, and uh, any other type of setback that you could imagine. Alexio Ramirez is our most important player.
most valuable player from this season is not here tonight. Katoni Stevens, or Katoni Collins, I should say. Uh, Katoni Collins was an incredible player for us this year, and I want to announce some of his other accomplishments in just a few minutes. But at this time, I'd like to ask Gabriela Martinez and Zamaya to come forward and accept this most valuable player award for Katoni. Katoni was our leading scorer, rebounder, assists, steals, blocks. It's a, an incredible year. Those of you who had the opportunity to see him play this year saw uh, great athletic ability combined with, with great effort. And uh, it just had an incredible season. And he was definitely our most valuable player. We also have some postseason awards. Second team all conference this year, Alexio Ramirez. Second team all conference, Jared Stonis. Tony Collins made first team all conference. He was player of the year in the Skyway Conference. tremendous achievements, but even further, Katoni was named first team all region, and finally, for the first time in the history of the College of Lake County, a first team National Junior College Athletic Association men's basketball All-American team. Did I miss anything? <laughs> Thank you. It was a struggle. Um, a little bit of history of the program. Uh, in the year 1617, there was no program here for women's basketball at CLC. And when I got the job in December of 2016, um, there was a lot of work to do. And, and it, it was uh, a chore to get people to buy into what I wanted to see as a vision here. And when we started the season, we started with nine people. By December 18th, we had five. Just enough to play, but we had five. Uh, we lost one of our better players in the second game of the season to a torn Achilles tendon. Uh, so when we played the second half, which is basically the conference season, with five people, there was no question about who was playing. So that was easy. Um, playing time, there was no, no parent getting in my ear saying my daughter should be playing more. No kids saying, hey, you're not giving me enough playing time. Play as long as you can was basically the motto of our team this year. And to play 40 minutes, and sometimes, in the case of three games we played overtime, 45 minutes. It was, it was a true testament to the players who played for me this year. Um, but then I thought about why they might have wanted to play the whole year. And what really came down to was they had a free meal after road games. So I think that was the real reason they wanted to play. <laughs> but um, the pride that I had in the people who played for me, I can't tell you how, how proud I was of, of the effort they put in every night. 
When we walked into the gym, people were always looking for the second team to come in. And they said, no, this is what we have here. We played some games, by the way, with three people at the end of the game because of foul trouble. Fortunately, I'm not a drinker, because otherwise I'd be in rehab right now. And you don't want to see me in it, I've done this, as, as Nick said, the coaching staff has, has many years on, on their resumes of, of coaching uh, basketball and baseball and softball, etc. And I've been through seasons where I had one young man break a bone in both of his feet we had scarlet fever on the team. I thought that was something from the 1400s. I thought that was all gone too. But this year was the biggest challenge I've ever had in my coaching career. And the only way I got through it was to have Jada as my sounding board after many games. Um, when, when you have an, a person who really believes in this and the institution you're working at, and Jada really does, it's it's a pleasure to see her every day, and it's going to be a sad thing not to see her next year. She's not dying; she's just going to another college. But <laughs> it, it, it's it, she was my my rock every day in practice when things went you know off the rails um, in games or whatever. It was always you know Jada could talk me down off the off the, the ledge. Um, I also want to thank before I go on um, Vanessa. Because obviously with, with five people, it's a lot of rehabbing, um, keeping them together and somehow, uh, wrapping them in with you know, uh, duct tape or whatever you did to keep them on the floor. Um, that, that was, it's huge. And Vanessa, we're gonna miss you and thank you for all you did for our team this year. Um, the athletic department. The people like Sue with our travel and Nick and Heath, you know, keep me informed of what our kids are doing in the classroom. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you very much. Uh, one other thing before I go on is I, I, when, when you put a team together at the beginning of a season and, and think you're going to have nine or ten people, and then one by one, for whatever reason, people drop off, injuries, etc. You got you have to have people and, and, and families who are together. Our team and, and the families who they count come from real testaments to the young ladies who played for me. Um, because they never gave up. You know, I think it was the second to last game of the season we were playing McHenry, who was who eventually won the conference. And with, I think it was four minutes to go in the game, we were winning. And to see that effort, and to see all the things, you know, a lot of obstacles. And when, when um, the one young lady tore her Achilles kind of in the second game of the season, her first game, she had scored 23 points and had 17 rebounds. And through three quarters of the second game, which, where she got hurt, she was on pace to do better than that. So to see our team not quit, to stay diligent in the classroom, so I didn't have to worry about uh, people being ineligible. Doing, doing the things that student athletes should do, I think is a testament, not to me, but the young women who played for me this year. Um, lastly, as far as a thank you to Richard. As Coach said, the video that's available, Richard was on top of things. He gave Martin Scorsese a run for his money with the, with the video he did this year. He, he was great as a director and producer of things. So Richard, thank you. At this time, I want to talk a little bit about you know, personal accolades that people got in our team. I, as a coach, have never given the Most Valuable Player Award. I just don't believe in it on a team, in a team sport. It's just a personal thing. It's not saying I'm right. I don't believe you know, the person who, who hits the jump shot usually got a pass from somebody to, to, to set them up. Um, the person, we had Maxine Knox on the team. Maxine Knox is about, I think when she goes to the amusement park, they ask her if she can go and eat that thing. If you're this tall, you can get in and around. But she had games where she had double digit rebounds. So to say she wasn't valuable to the team would be, wouldn't be correct. Um, we, had, we had people who just gave it their blood and guts, literally at times. 
to, to play and to compete. Um, there were times there was people talking about, well, bag the season, and I had talked to Dick and said, we can't do that, because if we want a, a viable program going forward, you can't have two years in a row when you don't have a team. So, I don't, like I said, I don't, I don't give a most valuable player, because everybody, to me, contributes something, and if, you know, like when you see when you're a kid going home, the first thing your parents ask is how many points did you score? They don't ask how many assists a guy, did you play good defense, did you, you know, did you get, you know, rebounds, it's usually how much did you score? I think it's a little overrated as how much you can score because, like I said, to have a great program, you have to have people who are willing to sacrifice for the good of the, of the group. But we had, we have one award I'm giving out this year, and I truly believe in the student athlete um, name. And this young lady in the first semester had a 4.0 grade point average. And I think probably when the grades are posted this week, she'll continue to have a 4.0 grade point average. She also was an all-conference player. She, was, she led Division II women's basketball in, re, in total rebounds. She was um, fourth in block shots and 11th in assists. Now, she started out playing the power forward position, and after the injury, I moved her to point guard. Um, and, and she also was first team all conference. So the student athlete award for this year goes to Hannah Raupauk. Um, so th that to me is, is what I want all our athletes to be, students first and athletes second, because all this goes away in a couple of years as far as athletics, but what you do in the classroom is going to, you know, pay your way for the rest of your life. And CLC gives you a great base, and if you take advantage of it, you know, your future, future for everybody here will be bright. So I want to thank everybody who came out tonight. I want, again, I want to thank all the people in the administration here um, for helping me in my first year here. And uh, thanks again to our support staff like Jada and Richard. Thank you. All right, thank you, Coach. Next, we're going to introduce Sue Garcia, our head softball coach. Hi, everybody, and uh, I'd like to uh, introduce myself. As Nick did, I am the uh, oh, thank you. I'm the uh, College of Lake County softball coach. I've been here for X number of years, and um, I'm not telling you how long because I talked to Chuck. Chuck and I probably take up more than half of that hundred years that Nick was talking about at the beginning. But anyway. Um, our season, I had 13 young ladies. We started with 13, we ended with 13, and it was a grand 13, if I do say so. Um, Skill-wise, talent-wise, personality-wise, um, it was a great group. I had a lot of fun this year. I'm hoping the uh, athletes did. Record-wise, I keep telling everybody this is the best seven in 28 team I've ever had. <laughs> We didn't have a great year. Individually, we had some, some outstanding players, but uh, we couldn't, uh, unfortunately, put it all together when we needed to. But before I uh, introduce my group, I want to introduce John Cox. He's going to come up and help me. My assistant coach. John and I go way back. He's been with me for 21, oh, only 19 years as of this year. So, but uh, yeah, John and I, we see eye to eye and everything, something will happen and we can just look at each other and both shake our heads or give each other the thumbs up. Um, he's, he's a great help. I can't say enough about John. I'm gonna introduce the girls individually. Uh, so if they come up, I have a um, stats, a team picture and stats and a team picture in here, I think. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the freshmen first. We're going to go alphabetically. So Jillian Foote, shortstop for us, uh, played a little outfield, uh, came back from um, Green Bay, UW-Green Bay, half semester, and I, I was in heaven. It was just a great phone call I got, and uh, 
That's right. <laughs> she, was a, she was a big plus for the team this year. Thank you, Miss Jillian. I'm just going to introduce them one at a time and they can come up. Helen Hall. Um, the outfield for us did a nice job. Was there all the time. Couldn't ask any more of her than what we did. Um, we thank you. Outfield for us. We had her practicing at first base, so she's kind of mad at me that she didn't get a chance to play uh, first base this year, but uh, we'll work on it. She's a natural lefty lefty for us. But um, yeah, she. <laughs> we welcome her back next year. We've got 13, 13 kids, and two of them are sophomores, so uh, Quinlan is a freshman, and hopefully she'll be back next year. Thank you. Amber Mitchell Majeski. Is Amber here today? No, Amber. <laughs> Haley Paglich. Haley's here. Oh, did I say your name wrong? Come on up, Haley. <laughs> Haley joined us kind of late. She joined us this last semester. And she's playing summer ball. And she's like, well, if I'm going to play summer ball, I might as well play spring ball. Uh, Haley was a catcher, played a little outfield for us, um, did a real nice job. Thank you, ma'am. Carissa Pope. Carissa. Carissa's from Gray's Lake North. Yes, okay. And she uh, she's a third baseman, and that's where she played. She wasn't going to let anybody else play uh, third base. So there you go, Carissa. Thank you. Yanni Rodriguez. Yanni. Yanni kind of did it all again for us. She was a utility player. A little outfield, a little second base, a uh, little third base. I don't know if she played first. She just, she was kind of all over the place for us and uh, did a real nice job. So thank you, ma'am. Carly Rattuno. Yeah! Carly was one of our catchers. <laughs> and a center fielder, even though she doesn't think so. Or her uh, parents don't think so either. Carly is a strictly a catcher, okay? One game was like, Car, you're playing center. And that's exactly what she did. What? And um, she went out and caught, if there were five fly balls out to her, she caught every single one of them. Did a real good job, so we uh, put her out there a couple more times. So uh, we'll see how next year goes too, Car. Catch center, catch center. Yeah. <laughs> Car will do anything we want her to do, so thank you very much. Breeze? Uh, Am I saying that right, Anna? Anna, yay. All right. Anna's another outfielder for us, another lefty lefty. Uh, a little speedy on the bases, gave us <laughs> gave us some help when we needed it um, at bat and on the field, and Anna was there all the time also, and we thank you very much, Miss Anna. Alyssa <laughs> Villalobos. Whoa, Alyssa's got fans. <laughs> oh, and she can sing, too. Alyssa. Alyssa did a number of things for us, too. She pitched. She played first. Um, she was a real in the gym. You, you, would, you would not know anybody better. Uh, she just kept going and going and going. So thank you, ma'am. My last freshman is Sammy Wilkins. some outfield for us. She's actually kind of new to the game, but I'll tell you what, she improved immensely um, from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. She was catching fly balls. Um, we didn't throw anybody out at first, but I'll tell you, Sam came dang near close to throwing somebody out at first, 
In the same game, she had uh, two hits and two RBIs, and it was a good game and a good year for you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Those are my um, 11 freshmen. With 11 kids, not knowing if they're all coming back or if they are coming back, we've got a great foundation for next year. Um, I only had two sophomores, and we're going to be sad to see both of them go. Um, alphabetically, we're going to start with Sam Beltran. <laughs> Is not a pitcher. But, she will tell you that, but she threw over 100 innings for us. Struck out about 45 people. Um, she just, she would do anything we asked her to do. She, she truly isn't a, uh, a pitcher. She threw a little bit in summer ball. Uh, threw for us last year, threw for us this year. Didn't throw in summer ball? No? Oh, she practiced though. So she, uh, she came out and did a, did a real nice job for us. And Sam's going to the uh, Cardinal Stritch University to finish her nursing career and play softball. Don't do it. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Erica Roman! If we could keep Erica around for another year, we would. She's only played this semester, but she came from Trinity after playing a year there. Um, Erica played second base. Then we needed a little help in the outfield, so she went in the outfield because she said that's what she did when she was over at Trinity. And uh, let me tell you, she did a real nice job too. Thank you very much. I've got awards to give out. And I wanted to make it kind of a secret special awards so nobody would know. First, I want to give out the all-conference awards. We had two of them. Our leader on the field for all-conference on the conference first team, Jillian Foote. Little shortstop for us, a little outfield, kind of did it all. Did a great job, and we're looking for uh, great things from Jillian next year, too. Thank you, bud. Um, this is a surprise, not to me, but maybe to this young lady. Uh, committed one error all season, and it wasn't even in conference. Erica Vroman. She hit a grand 537, I think it ended up being in conference. That's not overall, that's just in conference. Eeyore. <laughs> Thank you, bud. Congratulations. I have our captain, Sam. Come and get your plaque. about next year. <laughs> Sam's going to pass the baton on to the two new captains. Carly and Jill. <laughs> nope. <laughs> You're just... <laughs> She's passing the baton on, literally. You guys are going to be the captains next year, and Sam's going to give you all the pointers you need. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I've got four more awards to give out, so I'll hurry up here. We've got a batting champ. Hit 500 overall in our 35 games, 36 games. Hit 500. Julian Foot. A little bit of everything. She was our leadoff hitter. Um, if she didn't hit a home run when she let off, she'd hit a double, single, but uh, she definitely got it done in the leadoff spot. Thank you, ma'am. I also give out a Golden Glove Award. I already gave that um, little secret away. One error all year, Erica Broman.
Golden Glove second base, Golden Glove outfield, you name it, she got the job done. Like I said, we'd like her back, but I don't think it's been happening. She's not quite sure where she's going uh, next year. She's talking to a couple of colleges because she would like to continue playing. Um, but uh, no, Dominican, Parkside, what was it? There was one more. Oh, that's it? No, there was one more I thought we talked to. All right. Um, one more award, I call it the Lancer Award, kind of on the following suit of the uh, basketball coach. Um, a good student athlete, a good softball player, well-rounded, Carly Rattuno. <laughs> this is one of our captains from next year, so the, the award is deserving. Yes, Carly girl. <laughs> I've got one more award to give out. This is Yoda. Yoda came with us all year round, and we gave him to the player that did something good in the game. You know, home run, got a hit. Um, just did well all over. And not to leave anybody out, I'm gonna give this Yoda to um, our leader, Sam, but I'm gonna give this Yoda to all the teams, so make sure you guys come and see me afterwards. I've got Yodas for everybody. But Sam Beltran, our Way to Go Player of the Year, Yoda. And again, thank you everybody. I wanna thank Karen, Dr. Sudik for coming, and thank you very much. Oh, oh, I lied, I've got one more thing. We have an all-region player. There are eight teams in our region. If you put 15 people on each team, so eight times 15, one of the top 10 players in the state for our region, Jillian Foote. Next, I'd like to introduce our head baseball coach, Heath Cummings. Yeah. Thanks a lot, everybody, for being here. Uh, we don't have a Yoda or a uh, green, green toy, whatever you got there. I'm not sure what that was, but uh, it's our words. Uh, no, I want to say thanks for everybody coming out here, especially the, the players coming out and parents coming out here. I see a lot of parents out here with the players and stuff like that. It's awesome to see the support and what have you. Uh, I want to say, say thanks to Nick and Sue and uh, Renee and Cindy who's not here um, and, and Karen as well uh, and uh, Laura, the new president, coming out here to, to, to see what we're all about. Um, that's pretty big to, to see that support and what have you. So uh, I'm going to keep it kind of short. We're not going to have everybody come up at once. Uh, we're not going to have uh, all that stuff. We have, we have a lot of players on our team. Uh, it's actually uh, probably the the least amount of players we've had on that team and in the, in the eight years of, of myself being here. Um, we, have, we had 21 players at roster season uh, come this spring. We actually had 38 in the fall. Uh, we, were, we had some injuries going on in the fall and some players decided they didn't want to play anymore and that typically happens at the college level. They see the, the, the workload and they see that the uh, time they got to spend in the, in the practice season and stuff like that, they decided they are going to do other things. So we, we actually started a season with 21 players and we uh, had some injuries that cost uh, some um, pitching as far as that goes. Uh, actually one of my middle infielders broke his thumb on uh, diving for a ground ball, actually a pop-up was way dope for him. Um, in practice. In practice, in practice yes. Um, my players, I try, I try to teach them to go give everything you got, and uh, even if you're in practice, you know, if, if a ground ball gets past them, I'm, I'm on them a little bit, and uh, tell them they should have that ball, even though they're 20 feet from it, or what have you, but they, they think they should have had it, but I said it, so that's, that's why Colin uh, dove for a foul ball that was in practice and broke his thumb. So, but we had some, a couple of pitchers that would have helped us. They had some knee surgeries. Uh, and we had another pitcher who was in a car accident that pitched for us early on and then was side table for a little bit uh, for about a month and a half of the season, but came back pitching through um, uh, 
some back injuries and what have you. Uh, but it was it was a good season, meaning that the players themselves uh, competed every game. Uh, they didn't give up. Uh, you know, our record doesn't show uh, that we, we had a successful season, but I think it was a successful season, um, meaning that the players competed every game. Uh, I think there's only about five or six games that we were not in, meaning that we didn't show up and play. Uh, but for the most part, I think we, we lost 10 games this year by one run. And if you look at that, you go, wow, okay, 10 games by one run. Uh, if you won half of those, it might be a different outcome, what have you. We finished the season 23 and 30, I believe. Uh, we were 23 and 20 at one time, so that tells you what we did in the last 10. Uh, but uh, what happened? What happened was is that the, the guys kept playing hard. We just we just couldn't get it done uh, on that end. We we had players playing positions they probably shouldn't have been playing because of injuries. Uh, we we had some tired players as well. We had some guys playing two way, meaning two way, meaning they're pitchers and infillers, outfillers, and what have you. And, and when you have a, a shorter number of players, it takes a toll on you. I think our last two weeks of the season, we played 22 games uh, due to the due to the weather we had this spring, which was, in my 21 years of coaching baseball at the high school level, and eight years here, um, so 20, 21 years coaching total, I've never seen it this bad around here for weather-wise. It, it was pretty brutal. Um, even my high school coach, who coached me for many years, he's, he's an old timer, uh, he coached 40 plus years here, and, and we were talking on the phone after every game, and he, he would say the same thing, never seen it this cold and, and, and the way the spring went for us. So we had a lot of backups, and we had to play a lot of games towards the end of the season, and I think that just got to us a little bit there. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call up uh, each, each athlete, and they're going to stay up here, and uh, that way you can see the actual 2018 baseball team in front of us, and then I'll have them all stay here, and then we'll give out awards to uh, individual awards, and we'll give out uh, call conferences and stuff like that too as well. So that way we're not going back and forth, and we can, we can get this uh, done as soon as possible. So I'm, so I'm sure some people want to go home and watch some hockey games. Hockey? Yeah. No, maybe not. No. So, I'm not sure. So, but that, first guy I call up is uh, JT Reed. He's a center filler for us. Left fill of fours, uh, they lead off fours, come on up. And uh, he's kind of our spark the team. Uh, it kind of, kind of seemed like if, if he was going, we were going. Um, he, he did a great job, just standing right in this side right there. So, so I'll explain, I see, I'm dealing with 18, 19 year old boys, so I'm gonna explain some more time to you, all right? You guys are gonna go on this side and that side, all right? So that's how shit you to come up. But he had, he, had a great, he had a great year for us playing the outfield for us. Uh, he's a switch hitter as well. Um, he uh, actually hit, uh, hit uh, 346 on the year um, for us. He had 27 stolen bases, led the team in stolen bases. Um, and he was, he was a spark plug for us. Um, we're, we're, we know he's coming back next year, uh, and we're looking forward to having him back out in the lineup there, and uh, we're looking for some great things for him as well. So, uh, JT Reed. Next player is Jimmy Callahan. Jimmy Callahan was our center fielder too, and our, and our left fielder. I, I flipped these guys every game, it seemed like, um, and he was a number two hitter for us. Uh, he, he did a great job for us. He's another freshman. Uh, he did a great job for us. He was he, he would always come up with some big time hits for us. It seemed like uh, he had a little bit of speed too. He, he stole uh, 17 bases. He hit three. Let's see if I can read this. 335 on the year, um, and he had uh, had seven doubles uh, and uh, one triple, one homer as well, and 24 RBIs. Uh, did a great job in the two hole for us. Um, it seemed like when we needed a hit, he, he got it for us, um, and he he, he um, got better and better as the season went on. So um, very proud of what he did this year. He's coming back next year for us to take that same role on. So next guy will be Jacob Monfrey. Jacob Monfrey was a catcher for us. He had a little for us. Uh, told me he could play outfield, but with his speed, he wasn't going to play out for us. But, uh, no, he, he did a great job for us this year behind the dish and playing uh, third base. He actually threw one inning for us uh, as well. He did really well at that end of it. He kind of surprised me a little bit there. He's, he's got a plus arm. Um, he's got a real strong arm in the infield and behind the dish and stuff like that. So I think pitching would come pretty easy for him. So 
Uh, we're looking for some great things for him next year. Probably didn't hit the ball like he wanted to this year. He probably, probably hit a little better in high school. He hit 274 this year. Uh, we're looking for some good things. Um, he had seven doubles on the year. Uh, stolen bases wasn't that great. But, uh, <laughs> he, he, he had some. He had, he, had, he, was four, he had four stolen bases, but he got caught three times. Which was, <laughs> which <he> goes, so. <laughs> but no, he, he did a great job for us. Looking forward to having him next year for us playing. And uh, he, he, had, he got a lot of bats for us. I think he had over. We had 115 at bats in the year, so it's not a lot of bats yet for us. So great job there. Next player is Aiden Miller. Aiden Miller. This guy I call Thor. You look at him a little bit. Take a look, girls. Look, take a look at him. He's got flow going that he used to have. And uh, actually, I sent these guys a picture on Easter because these guys. Would, would, you know, talking about my hair and the you know, haircut the day coach and what have you. And, and I actually sent a picture of myself um, on Easter Day, wishing them happy Easter to their family and themselves and all that. And there's a picture of myself. And I did have hair back then, believe it or not. There. So the, they, they enjoyed that picture, I think. So Aiden caught for us a little bit, played first base, DH for us. Uh, he started hitting the ball a lot better and as the season went on. Uh, he started out a little slow for us, but he always was putting the ball in play. He just wasn't hitting the ball hard enough. Uh, he had a lot, a lot of weak ground balls early on, but uh, he definitely he definitely started swinging the bat as the season went on. He's the type of guy, I think, a streak hitter, meaning that he's got to see a lot of live pitching in order to be a successful hitter. Uh, and, and early on, if you remember what I said earlier, we had a, a tough, uh, cold spring, so we'd come back home from Florida. We did a Florida trip down there for in Orlando area for about eight days. He came back and we sat around for a little bit, played a couple games, and we had to sit about 10 days. So as the season went on, he started getting better. He, he had a couple home runs for us, had nine doubles, um, and uh, we're looking for some good things out of him next year for us. Um, he's going to probably be in the role of being a catcher and a first baseman for us and, and doing the same thing they did this year for us. Again, another freshman, so nice job, Aiden. There's 10 of those. She's got 10 brothers and sisters, five girls, five boys. and. When he when I was recruiting him, he told me that that was like you know he's kind of hit home with me because you know to me family is everything and uh, I think if you have a, a good group of family and and you're going to be successful in life and, and I could tell by the way his family is and the way they come out and support him. All of his brothers and sisters are always at the game. Mom and dad are at the game and all that and and even when it was cold out. So he's, he's got a great support cast. So next guy is Kyler Waller. Outfield yeah. for us. He, he was the first baseman in high school. We had him play um, outfield because we were a little short in the outfield. Um, so we had him play outfield. He, he kind of a guy said, do whatever you, whatever you ask, I'm your coach. And, and he got it done there. So he also led the team in hitting, hit 418 on the year. Uh, he had uh, 12 doubles, four triples, three homers, 43 RBIs, uh, 90 total stolen, uh, total bases. He had a 590 uh, four slugging uh, percentage and 495 on base percentage. He had 17 stolen bases as well, so he also pitched for us. Uh, he's one of our one of our top arms as well. Uh, we were trying to use him as a closer early on, but we had some injuries with pitchers, like I said earlier, and uh, he just, I texted him one night, hey, Kyle, we might need you to start starting games to try and save you as a closer, and he told me, coach, whatever you need me to do. And uh, that that to me hit home, and that's what, that's what it's all about there. So he, he had a great year for us. Um, and we're looking for, for him to be successful next year as well. So nice job, Kyle. <laughs> next guy is Chris Primrich. Chris Primrich is a freshman as well, left-handed pitcher of ours, played first base as well. Uh, he, he was he was our guy, one of the top guys. We had two guys I felt that were one and one, um, and and uh, I thought we had two pitchers here that that really did a great job for us this year. Chris pitched against all the tough teams. Um, he left-handed pitcher. Uh, he, he actually, um, he didn't, record-wise, you wouldn't show it as far as that goes because he was three and five on the mound, but uh, you know, as a team-wise, you, you, you know where we finished, but he also had 50 plus innings pitch for us. He had over, over 70 strikeouts on the year for us in those innings. Uh, ERA was a 3-6 uh, going into our last game playing, so he had, a, he had a great year on the mound for us in that aspect. Uh, we, we just didn't play. Our team, 
I, I'm not trying to take any away from away from the guys, but they know it, that we, we made a tremendous amount of errors this year, and our pitchers were throwing strikes and what have you. We just couldn't feel the ball when we needed to. And, and Chris pitched some tough games, and, and if we would have cut the ball a little bit better than than uh, we did, we probably he'd probably be five and three instead of three and five. But Chris is also a freshman. He is not coming back next year. He got a scholarship to North Carolina Central, uh, which is a Division One school down there. He's going on down to pitch for them as well. So he got a nice scholarship to go pitch for. So. <laughs> Next guy is Colin Drake. Colin Drake was our shortstop. Colin Drake is a guy that broke his thumb trying to catch a pop up in the infield. Uh, he uh, he was a number two hitter before he got hurt, and uh, he was hitting 360 in the year for us. Uh, broke his thumb on March 17th and never played again for us this year. Um, had to had to uh, have surgery on it as well, um, and we we really missed him. You know, as far as being being at that at that middle infield there, so um, he. Uh, He'll be back next year. Hopefully, he's 100%, and we're looking for some great things out of him next year. So he's a true leader on the field, and, and uh, I'm sure he'll be back 100% for us. Next player would be Danny Yates. Danny Yates, who is a pitcher, right-hand pitcher of ours. I'd say he's our one-on-one, -on -one, like Chris Primrich. He threw some great games for us. Um, also played third base for us as well. Uh, you know, we, we didn't think he'll play a lot of third base for us, but we had some injuries and everything else. I really wanted to save him just for throwing because of the way his arm works and everything else. He's got a live arm and stuff. And, um, you know, baseball and softball is a little bit different. You know, softball, girls can throw and throw and throw and throw and, you know, go pitch, you know, all day and then go pitch tomorrow and pitch some more and pitch some more. Baseball, you can't do that, you know. So we're always conscious of, of their pitch count. We're trying to make sure they're not getting over a certain pitch count and everything else. And then you have an athlete who's trying to play, you know, third base as well. It's tough to throw across the diamond and stuff like that. So, but he did a great job for us at third. He also did an outstanding job for us on the mound. Uh, he had a 2-5 for ERA. He was also 3-5 and five on the mound for us. He had 50 plus innings pitch for us with uh, 63 strikeouts on the year. Um, you know, we're looking for some great things out of him next year on the mound and uh, looking for him to, to improve uh, at third base as well. So, nice job, Danny Yates. Next guy is Coy Budwig. Coy Budwig is a sophomore. Coy is a guy who got the car accident on March 17th, I think it was, or something like that. It seemed like that, that second week of March, we had a lot of problems at the, on the baseball field with, with uh, Colin Drake going down, and, and uh, Coy Budwig was, uh, I think, 2-0 and, uh, and uh, right before his car accident, and the lady pulled out in front of him on the road up here after one of our games and uh, told his car out, and he hurt. He, what, did you have a herniated disc? Uh, yeah. Herniated disc, and he was out uh, for the rest of the season. Vanessa did a great job with him trying to get him rehab, and what have you, we sent him out to some doctors, and they did some uh, MRIs on him and everything else, and found out that he had that herniated disc. So. He's, he was sidelined for a while for us, and uh, about two and a half weeks ago, was it maybe two and a half weeks ago, three weeks ago, he decided that he's going to fight through it, and uh, he wanted to pitch again, so he picked up two more wins for us, and uh, he finished the year with a 4-1 record, uh, and he had a 3.9 ERA, 3.95, excuse me. Um, he, he, he's a guy... You know, most teams look at him going, he's a small cat, you know, he's not a big guy, whatever, what's he going to do against us, but he knows how to pitch. Uh, his pitches were always low, he always mixed it up a little bit, uh, had a great change up, and he was always ahead of the count, and just knew how to pitch, and uh, it's unfortunate what happened to him, because I think if he had been healthy the whole year, uh, he would have had a very special year for us, but he did battle it for us, and, uh, you know, it's sad to see what happened, but uh, he did come back and, and finish the season out for us. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Next guy is Jimmy Reynolds. We call him Kick Boss. Uh, I think they call him Kick Boss because he likes bacon, he told us. So, uh, so he plays first base for us. Uh, platoon started here and there. Uh, he's a freshman, and we are looking for him to come back next year. Um, I'm hoping he's coming back. He's a great teammate. Everybody loves him being around in the dugout and what have you. Uh, he gets a little stronger. Um, he gets to do a little more work with his swing and all that. You should be able to help us out next year. Nice job. <laughs> next guy is Kyle Brumba. Kyle Brumba 
is a freshman. He was a third baseman starting out. He uh, actually ended up being a starting shortstop. He did a great job taking over for Callen, uh, especially when I asked him when the last time he played short. He says, 12 years old coach. I'm like, oh boy, we got, we got some nine here into the number four here for us at the end of the year. So that tells you what he started out at. And he finished the season at a three, I believe, 314 average on the year with uh, four doubles, one triple, one homer, and 26 RBI. So he got better as the season went on at the bat, and he improved playing uh, shortstop for us as the season went on and stuff like that. So um, looking for some great things on him next year. I think we're going to probably throw him back over at third for next year, uh, or, or maybe at second base or what have you. But, uh, um, but he did a great job for us, and we're looking for some good things out of him next year. Nice job, pal. <laughs> next guy is Curtis Sippy. He's a sophomore, right-handed arm. Uh, he was our number four pitcher for us this year, and he started a lot of tough games for us. He is, he, he is a guy that I'm going to miss a lot um, because he does this stuff like this right here, you know? So, no, he, he's, he's, he's all heart. Um, I'm gonna miss having him around. He, he uh, he's definitely got a special place in my heart. Uh, he he didn't have the season he wanted on the mound. Uh, he, he was two and four on the mound for us, uh, but he did get a nice a nice scholarship to go on a training international full ride there. Uh, he's also graduated with honors here, uh, which is pretty impressive. Um, so he, he gets it done in the classroom and he gets it done on the field. Um, with Sippy, when he was on the mound for us, we seemed to play defense not, not too well. We would make probably three or four errors behind him. The guy would go out there and have you know, no hits come out in, and he's losing three nothing. Um, and it's not because of his wildness, not because he wasn't around his own, but it was because we weren't making plays for him. And he's going to go on and, and pitch down there at the, at the Trinity, and uh, I know he's going to be successful in life because of how his makeup is. And, and, how much work he puts in the summer, so. Next guy is Tyler Jacoby. Freshman, another freshman, left-handed pitcher. Did a great job for us on the mound here. We thought he was gonna be a relief guy for us, but uh, he just stepped up a lot notch, and uh, he has some great outings for us. Uh, and uh, I, knew he, I knew he was something special for us uh, when we were down in Florida and we played a, an elite team down here, and he just, you know, he came a lot, we came away with a loss, but he actually, showed me something right there because he was pitching against guys that were, were elite level and, and uh, he just did a great job and then he came back home and then two weeks ago beat Madison Junior College 4 nothing that we lost the first game to him to them. In my eight years of playing or coaching here, uh, we've never shut out Madison Junior College. Uh, we've always we've beaten them, um, but uh, they've beaten us more than we've beaten them, but we've never shut them out in the game. and. Uh, he did a great job there for him. He was uh, on the mound for us. He was three and three with a 3.38 ERA, 45 innings pitch, 35 strikeouts, and 20 walks. Nice job. I was calling him Blunder the whole year, and then he says, Coach, you're saying my name wrong. Well, I, I say everybody's name wrong, so I just told him to get used to it. That's why I say everybody. I, I can't help it. But the, Mr. Scanner, Scanner Nick would tell me the same thing. He would tell me, he, he, I go in his office, start talk, trying to pronounce players' names. He look at me like, "What are you trying to say to me?" And I'm trying to tell him the name, and, and uh, I'm not really good with names. I'm good with faces and what have you. So, but uh, but Sean did a great job for us. He uh, he was a very relief guy for us. He came in some tough situations for us. I think he got better as the season went on. Uh, you know, um, he definitely came in in some you know bases loaded jams and got out of course. He did pitch, uh, I believe, uh, how many innings you get there? Sorry about that. I just don't work as good as they used to. 21 innings for us. He had 3.45 ERA for us. Um, he did a great job for us. He's also a freshman. He is not coming back. He told me the other day he's not coming back. He's, he's got some arm injuries. He's been fighting through it in the fall. Ben Lang is a second baseman for us, a sophomore for us. Ben Lang was a pitcher for us last year, and he, 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 he um, Started playing second base for us this year. I can play in field coach, and uh, we put him over there, and he, he played in uh, pretty much almost every game over there besides four, I think, and he did a great job over there for us. Got to do a little better job on flying balls, but uh, they do a good job there. As, as, I was kind of surprised. These guys would tell you this, and some of your parents at the game yesterday in a sectional game and caught it, and 
I was in the dugout. I was, I was pretty impressed because uh, there's been a few fine balls that uh, he, he should have caught his back pocket and didn't do so. <laughs> like that. No, he did. He did a good job for us last this year. Nice job, Ben. Gonna miss him. Great kid, high character kid. He wants to be a coach. Wants to be an educator. Um, and uh, he, he, anything I asked him, he'd do it. Never said a word. One, one bit. Just do it and grind. And every day he came into practice and worked hard. So. We call him Cheeto. Just take a look at him. Cheeto, take a turn around, take a look. All right. So he likes eating Cheetos. Uh, this, this, we, <laughs> we are in Florida playing, and uh, everybody, we go to Walmart and buy groceries for the players and everything else, and he's got like 20 bags of Doritos and Fritos and Cheetos and everything else. And the guys are telling me that's all he's eating, coach. He's not eating meat, he's not eating anything, he's just eating this. So um, so I asked him, and he says, yeah, I like chips. And I go, yeah, okay. So we started, we started calling him Cheeto as the, as the year went on. So he did pitch in relief for us, he relief guy for us. Um, then probably pitch as much as he wanted to, but you know, hopefully get a little more in his next year for him. Um, and get a little stronger, get away weight room, and maybe stop eating all them Cheetos. So, next guy is Trey Castro. He was left hand pitcher for us. He uh, was a reliever for us. Did a great job for us. Uh, had a great pickoff move to first base. Uh, he was he always dying to pick a guy off at first base. I think he would walk a guy on purpose to pick him off. So um, he did that a couple of times. And uh, you know, we'd come in and give him a high five, what have you. What's, 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 what's great about this guy, he's got a huge heart. And everybody sees it on the team. And everybody, everybody who's in the mound, everybody's, everybody's just rooting for him. You know, he's not a high velocity guy. You know, he's not going to go out there and wall you in the mound, what have you, but he goes out there and competes and gets outs. And uh, he did a great job for us this year. Uh, we're looking for some good things on him next year. And uh, next guy would be John Brand. He's a freshman. John Brand, he's a right hand pitcher for us. He started, he started in uh, probably four or five games for us. He was actually 3 0 on the mound for us with a 4.70 ERA. He had 30 plus innings for us pitched. Uh, we did play defense behind him when he was on the mound. Um, and uh, he struggled with us sometimes on the mound, but I think he found his way. And I think the more he's on the mound, the better he's going to get and stuff like that. So we're looking at some great things on him next year. So he's a great kid. Uh, you know, we, we, we have our players, unlike I know the softball girls, they go out and play and that's it. And they leave the field. And we have our players do work on the field meaning that they have to chalk the lines, that they have to rake the field, they have to clean the dugouts out, they have to uh, clean out the press box, uh, they have to, uh, trying to do is, is teach them, you know, respect what you have, you know, and take care of what you have and everything else and take pride in it. And, and John, he was our, our chalker for the chalk the lines and the, and, the, and the home plate and everything else. And, and, uh, he was so good at it that actually one coach this year said, man, can I take him for our field? And he's doing a good job. So no, he, he would always, whatever you ask him, he'd do it. And no matter what, he would be out there helping out any way he can. So he didn't have, he didn't have to ask where's John at, he was always helping. So, um, and, and to go back on that whole, you know, work thing, you know, I think it's good to, to teach players discipline in a, in a different way and what have you. And uh, I think if they start respecting what they have, they're going to take care of it and what have you. And, they see you as a coach that cares about that field and, and about them. They're going to give you a little more. And, and I think by giving them things to do, they, they start taking pride in, in doing better with that. So next guy would be Casey Wilson. <laughs> Willie was a catcher of ours, played a little third. Uh, he did it in the four hole for us. They hit in the five hole for us. He did a great job behind the dish for us. Uh, he hit uh, just, just under 300, 296 on a year. Uh, he had eight doubles, three triples, one homer. Uh, just a great guy. Everybody loved being around him. Uh, kind of a jokester a little bit there. Um, but uh, another, another kid that anything you ask him to do, it's kind of like John, you know, if you, if you needed some work done in the field, he'd do it, you know. And so, nice job. <clears throat> Next guy I'm going to mention, Thomas yeah. Bay. Thomas Bay didn't play this year for us. Uh, he was 
Academic league wise, he struggled in the fall, but he came out to practices for us and everything else. And, and uh, the guys love having him around, and we're looking for some good things on him next year. He's going to get his grades straightened. And uh, I always try to, players who don't do well in the fall, I try to keep them around for the spring, just to keep them around the, the team and everything else, to keep them going. Because if, if they don't have that, sometimes they're just going to stop going to school and have you. So we try to keep them around and tell them, hey, even though you didn't make grades, you know, in the fall, come out in the spring, practice with us, be around the team, and uh, you know, get get it done in the classroom, and, and hopefully next year. And, and it's worked out. It's worked out for some athletes, and some of it hasn't worked out. But uh, I think if you just shut them off, if you, you tell them they don't make make grades, and you just you, you say, okay, we'll we'll see you next year. It's, it's not good for the athletes. So, um, but uh, and to do 73 of them in, in the last eight years. Um, that's telling me that the players that we're getting, uh, they're getting it done in the classroom and on the field and stuff. And, and every one of them is getting some type of athletic scholarship or academic scholarship to go on and play at a four-year school. And it ranges from Division One, Division Two, and high school. So my job as a head coach, yeah, we want to win games. That's, that's great. We won 19 conference titles in baseball. We won 22 sectional titles in baseball. We've had, you know, 38 guys play pro ball. We had two of them right now playing pro ball that played for me a couple years ago. That's all great, but at the end of the day, we want them to go on and get the education and stuff like that and keep on playing and also get the education. And then by having a baseball as an avenue, helping paying for the school, that's, that's, even, that's even a plus. So, and uh, we have a lot of freshmen sitting in front of us right now. And uh, we have a lot of freshmen that I know can go on and play at a four-year school. Uh, we have three sophomores. You know, one's already committed to school. We have two other ones that we're trying to get into to a four-year school what we've done in the last eight years as far as moving players on. So with that being said, we're going to move on to the individual world awards, and uh, you guys can all sit down. We had a couple of players get all conference awards. Uh, we have one one player get first team, and we had three get uh, second team all conference. So uh, second team all conference uh, award winners are JT Reed, Jim Callahan, Rich. We also give out uh, pitching award, uh, most improved player award, award, and we also give out MVP award. Um, we, this year, we, I decided to give out two pitching awards because I thought we had two players, two pitchers that, you know, were pretty much equal. We, we basically put them up against the same teams, and they, you look at their record-wise, you look at what they did, innings-wise, and everything else, there isn't much splitting them. So um, the two players that got that award is Danny Yates and Chris Krimrich. That, but you have it tomorrow. So, next award will go out to a most improved player. Uh, most players, people don't think that's really a big deal, but to me, it's a huge deal. Um, to me, that tells me the athlete's getting better mentally wise, physically wise, and he's doing everything you ask out of him. Mean, he's performing on the field and he's getting it done. So, um, I myself, I told these players yesterday, I played college ball here back in the early 90s, 93, 94, my freshman year. I was here. Uh, Coach Gene Hansen, who was a who was an icon here and what have you, um, he 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 handed out this award and I actually received it. I thought, what the heck is this? The most improved? Was he trying to tell me I was terrible? When I got here, you know. And uh, and as I looked on it, I thought, okay, you know, when he told me what it was all about, as I listened to him talk, I, I understood where he's coming from, or whatever. And to me, and I went on and got MVPs when I went down to South Carolina, played and. and all conference and everything else. That, that award right there meant a lot to me as an athlete and stuff like that. And uh, that told me at that time I'm getting, I am getting better as an athlete. And this year award goes to Tyler Jacoby. Like I said earlier, he got better and better as the year went on. Uh, we thought he was going to be a relief guy for us only. He started being a starter for us and uh, he had a heck of a year for us on the mound. So. And the last awards go to one guy here, he's got a couple things we're gonna give him, so he kind of took home the, the gravy and everything. So this next guy, uh, he was an all-conference player for us, first team. 
it was hands down, uh, first team all conference player for us. Nobody even had this, the, the the votes that he got for all conference was was next guy up to him, more than close to him for all outfield. Uh, he also got it for pitching as well in the conference. Uh, he was three one in the mound for us as far as pitching goes for us in conference. He hit four eighteen in conference. Um, he pretty much did it. Pretty much did it all for us in conference, even throughout the year. So. Um, he, he received first team out conference. He also got the hitting award for us. He had 418 this year for us. And he also got the MVP trophy of the team. Sorry about the bat. I'm going to have to glue it back on for you. But it, it, uh, I guess it broke. Um, I didn't break it. I'm not sure how it broke, but it broke. Um, but we're, we'll, try to, we'll try to glue it back on there for you. But Kyler Waller. recruiting class coming in. I, I told these players there yesterday, I think it's the best recruiting class that I have coming in in, in my eight years of being a head coach here. Uh, we have some very, very talented players. We have some talented players leaving us, but we have some very talented players coming in. And, and I'm hoping to be back on that winning column and, and hopefully we're, we're competing for that 20th conference championship next year or so. But I'm very proud of these players. Uh, they're gonna hold a special place in my heart. Uh, they made coaching this year fun. Uh, they, they, they're always in games, uh, they're loose, um, and they, they, in 22 years of coaching, 21 years of coaching, uh, they, they definitely uh, made it fun for me. So even though we didn't have a, a winning record, they, uh, they did great for us. So my assistant coach, I'm sorry I didn't say this earlier, my assistant coach, <laughs> Zach Charbonneau, he is not here today. Uh, I should have said it earlier, but he had a baby girl here a couple of days ago, his firstborn child. So we've been kind of missing action for, he's been gone for about uh, two weeks now. Uh, baby was supposed to be born May 5th, and she was uh, she was born on Wednesday. They had some complications with her, um, as far as fever and breathing here the last few days, but she's doing better, and hopefully she'll be home tomorrow. But he wishes he was here, but uh, he's at the hospital with, the, with his daughter and all that. But he does a great job for us, they put the catchers and pitchers, and uh, hopefully he'll be back with us next year. So I want to thank everybody for coming out. And uh, Vanessa, I'm gonna miss you. Sorry, sorry you're leaving. And uh, Jaden, yeah, she just said hi to me all the time when I'm working out or in, every day. Coach Cummins, how you doing? Coach, how you doing? I coached her brothers in high school, so a long time ago, many moons ago. But uh, uh, we're gonna miss having you around, that's for sure. So I want to thank everybody else for coming out and uh, have a great evening. <laughs> Shorter than me. All right, so we've got uh, one one remaining sport for the for the spring, and that's men's tennis. We don't have any men's tennis players or coaches here, as I mentioned earlier in the program, uh, because they are currently in Plano, Texas, uh, for the national tournament. So that uh, kind of is obviously a testament to how their season went. Uh, but just a couple comments. Um, well, for Coach Love's schedule, we had sent some women's tennis players to Waco, Texas. Um, he got back in Wednesday night, and then he had to get back on a plane on Saturday morning to go down to uh, Plano, Texas with the men's team. So we've had a, quite a bit of fun with tennis these last couple weeks. Um, but uh, Coach Love, he sends his regrets. Uh, he's really obviously very happy with how the season went for the men um, and in the fall for the women. Uh, we had a veteran group this year. We had five of our Six starters last year come back. Um, they were region champions last year, went to nationals last year, so that's two years in a row, which is fantastic. Um, unfortunately, our number one singles player, Oliver Galejo, uh, had some knee surgery, so he was not able to compete this year. So it's, it's even crazier to think what things could have been if, if Oliver was healthy, but we're looking forward to having him back again next year. Um, but we do have a core of sophomores, four of them, uh, that that are leaving us and, and probably be continuing their, their tennis careers. And I know they're all gonna be studying and are great students as well. Um, they finished fourth in the conference this year. It doesn't sound too uh, flashy, um, but there was a, just about every match they, they lost was uh, just a matter of a couple match tie breaks that they lost. So we lost all those five, four. 
Um, if you know anything about tennis, you play six singles matches, three doubles matches, so your total score equals nine. We lost four or five and all those with, with those match tie breaks, with some of those singles matches and everything, it could easily have swung the other way. So uh, we really commend Coach Love and what he's done. Uh, my first couple years here, we were dead last in the conference and, and now we're contending every year. So uh, we're really proud of our of Coach Love and our men's tennis program and our student athletes. Uh, so let's just give a round of applause for tennis. He sent me a picture this morning, but I haven't heard any updates on how they've done yet so far yet today. But otherwise, I give those to you. Um, that's that's all we got. Um, thank you all for coming out. It's it's always great to hear the coaches talk about our student athletes and uh, kind of wrap things up. I will say this: none of you are done. Whether you're a sophomore or freshman, uh, you're not done. You have studies ahead of you. You got your career ahead of you, and we hope you put your full effort into all of it and make us proud. Uh, for those of you that are coming back, um, you know you, you need to take your summer studies if you're doing those seriously. Uh, put your time and effort into those, and we expect you to give it a full go ahead in the fall as well, uh, both academically and athletically. Um, so we want to achieve high levels in both areas. So I, I encourage you not to lose focus, and uh, be sure to let us know if you ever need anything. If you're leaving us or if you're returning, please uh, keep in close contact with us. Uh, thanks again, everybody. Have a wonderful evening. That concludes the banquet. <laughs>